huh? You ever have that kind of coffee out in your tent camp, boys, gals? You know, I should probably be making excuses or apologies for the, the luxuries of this setup, but I'm not. I got a smile on my face just like Grandpa would say. Grandpa used to say, I got a smile like a ripple on a slop pail. <laughs> I don't know what that meant, but... <laughs> well, folks, I wish you were all here with me. Because I could bet none of you are going to have as much fun today as I am. <laughs> Sorry about that. Not only do we have the greatest Southeast Alaska tour guide, he's full of good jokes. And when the jokes aren't funny, the stories are. So, <laughs> Are we ready? Are we going to leave the camera guy or is he going to jump in with us? I have no clue. I'm going bear hunting. <laughs> That's a big flat. At the right time of day, I will guarantee you that there's a bear feeding on that. Yeah, I would not bet you on that. <laughs> I'd lose my bet. As long as we're here and we're running with the tide, we might just shoot down there and All right. give her heck. You're, you're the man in charge, Jim. I'm you, not in charge of much at all. <laughs> oh, little do you know. <laughs> I'm out here having fun with friends. That's all that matters. Well, see if we can find one of those black Bruins on the beach. A cooperative one. Well, that one yesterday was about as cooperative as they get. That was fun watching it. put themselves in a position where they're unapproachable for the most part with whatever the wind direction is. They do it for a living. <laughs> That's true. Their livelihood depends on it. This isn't a game of tag for them. Uh, I 
I can't tell from here, but that looks like a nice bear. Size-wise, just relationship. Yeah. Let's see if we can motor to that rock. Rock. Yeah. And not get busted first. Yeah. All right, Chase, we're gonna keep him out of trouble. We're gonna cut right through here. Go get him. Boom! Put a bayonet on there, because when you come up on him, you're gonna be at five yards. <laughs> All right, gotta go around this bay. He's gonna be like really close when we get there. She goes. Exciting, exciting. Let's go on an adventure. Where are you taking us? I'm taking you right up there. Yeah, what's up there? <clears throat> There's a bunch of carbonate springs and mounds and stuff in there, and it's really fascinating because the the ocean and the creek and everything degasses carbon dioxide and has built these carbonate mounds. And our forest is very green and shades of greens and grays and stuff. And as you'll see, this is brilliant orange and brilliant reds. And these little things are blowing carbon dioxide enriched waters out. They're whistling and making all kinds of cool little noises. And it's kind of like a little Yellowstone without the heat. So we got about a 300 yard paddle up there and we'll be right in the thick of them. We'll just take a quick look at these things as long as we're back in here. You ever had rivers bubble on you? No. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. So that, that is calcium and iron. Uh-huh. And so there's 
they're not rare or threatening plants or anything like that, but there's a suite of plants that are pretty unique to that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also this is really productive for salmon. So there's a lot of filamentous algae and mosses that wouldn't be there because of the pH of the water. And that probably is a more productive thing for the growth of the smolts and stuff like that because there's more aquatic insects because there's different kinds of habitats for the insects to be in. Huh. Kind of cool. Well, I uh, need to fess up. I took a nap. <laughs> That's not fessing up. That's just being smart. And I did actually look for bears for a little bit. Well, that's wasted perfectly good nap time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like storm storming the beaches of Normandy. <laughs> Slower though. no bear. We're just about out of legal hunting light. So I'm going to grab our stuff and start walking over there. Meet up with Jim and tomorrow we're going to find him. See if I can plop in the drink here with my uniform on. We would not laugh. You would not laugh, right? Yeah. <laughs> if I fell in the water, you guys would be laughing so hard, and then you'd look at each other like, "Should we pull him out?" Push him down again. I didn't get good footage. Yeah. <laughs> Jace will say, "Ah, he looks like he's wore out. Better grab him. We need to make payroll next week." <laughs> jellyfish that's the one you don't want to get on your fingers did that before some things you don't have to do twice to learn your lesson no nope. 
you know, like slamming your finger in the car door. You don't need to do that twice. Realize that's a bad idea. <laughs> That is a good bear. Yeah. In my opinion, that is a good bear. So we would have to go down. Around that point. Yeah, and we'd come in off that point and follow. Because he's up this way, he yeah. might not sneak out in a little cove on us. We might actually be able to. And if you would, if you went this side, he's going to win you. Oh yeah, tell. we'd have to go to that. So point. I'll go. I'll go through this island where we did yesterday. Yeah. He's going back in the trees. He's right on the edge there. Got a perfect wind right now if he just come out. He was just feeding over here.
That's where you don't want to get your finger wrapped around that. Well, well yeah, but you'd only do it once. You, well, you <laughs> could do it 10 times. <laughs> then you'd be out of fingers. Shoulder right here. We came back to the base camp here. We've, we've pulled stakes and moved to a different part of the archipelago. And uh, the sun came out. The wind picked up, though. But that Bruin, that, that boar that I saw earlier today, that just walked back into the woods, he's about ready to get a victory lap here in about two or three hours. Jim's going to go drop us off there. He's given me one of his treasured deer calls. Got to put a little more pain in that. Okay. So, I'm supposed to call him in. Jim says if he runs into the bush again this evening, just call him right in. That's, that's what I'm a-fixin' to do. So, I fully intend to shoot him if he gets close enough. Let's go get him. Noon and right at about noon, that bear walked back in the woods here. So it's now almost six o'clock. We're gonna sit right here and see if he comes back out. I think he's gonna come out tonight. Tonight, tonight.
goes down. Huh? He just went down. He went down? He went down right after the roll. But keep, keep an eye on him just in case he goes back up. He fell below that last little rise before the tree line. That's what we like to see. Bear down in Alaska. Let's go. He's a really nice bear. He doesn't have a rub anywhere. Look at the head on that thing. <laughs> That's the longest I've ever waited on a bear. I think that's the longest I've ever waited on any animal I've ever shot. Oh, thank you, buddy. Oh, what a beautiful animal. Crazy. What a beautiful, beautiful animal. Thank you, mister. Thank you. Well, folks, it's been an interesting winter. I've been fretting about this hunt, and I probably shouldn't fret about such a great trip with Jace, the camera guy, wonderful longtime friend, Jim Bagetow, coming to the islands of Southeast. But I'll be honest, I had a really messed up uh, injury to my right hand, and I only got released for shooting 10 days ago. So I've been out shooting. I took a, I even took a stock off one of my rifles to do physical therapy because the grip and the articulation. And I just, I, I feel, feel so lucky. Feels that blessed is the is the word I always use, and it best describes what what I feel about my life and what we get to do to come and tell these stories about amazing places and. Like you've heard Jim talk about, you know, these bears at one time, their population crashed and uh, they were over hunted. And now everything here is by permit and uh, as it should be for, for non-residents. And Holy cow. I don't know how old he is. He's, his teeth are pretty worn on the bottom, but not super bad, but the hide is magnificent. He feels like he's in good physical shape, so the meat should be great. He's just everything I could have asked for for this trip. It's been a culmination of a lot of things. And Jace, and Jim, and the great guys at Lindell Boats let us, well, they, Frank, the, the captain, said, no, I'm gonna be up there. You just come and stay on our boat. and. I just can't believe it worked out this way. Just unbelievable. So, well, Jace, we better get carving. Let's do it. Yep, the meal train is here. Yeah, nice. Brother. Well done. <laughs> He's the bear from this morning. Jeez. We have more <laughs> work. of this bear. Thanks, Brother Bear. Thank you, Mr. Bear. 
Thanks to all you guys and your friendship. So great when you, when you have wonderful friends to come and help, Jace to help, and it all turns out like it's planned. Woo! Let's go back to the boat. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. <laughs> what you come for? Thanks so much. Really appreciate it, Frank. Yeah. Jace, as always, look at him. He's just smiling. He's got the camera up. Sitting there with that sack of seeds. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice bear, that one you got tonight. That's everything you can want for. Oh, yeah. I mean, we got it done tonight, so can't believe it. Two and a half days of bear hunting, and I uh, already got one, as they say, laying on the deck, right? You guys have heard me use that term all the time, laying on the deck. Put him on the deck. He's on the deck. And uh, we got a little bit more storytelling to do, a lot more work to do, but for a lot of you folks, I'm sure you've, you've hung around and said, all right, that's what I was here for. Nothing like Southeast Alaska when you got great friends, great help, and and uh, a great base camp. So, thanks for watching. <laughs>